We're making three candle risers three ways. Keep watching. We're going to start off with some candle holders from Dollar Tree. We're going to use three of these, one for each riser. And then I'm going to use these little plates. I would have preferred the ones without the texture on the bottom, but they work just fine. I'm going to use some rubbing alcohol and a spare sock to clean my my pieces off. We don't want any oils on there. We're going to get those all off. I'm going to wipe both sides, bottom and top of each one of these and also the candlesticks themselves. They are all going to be wiped down nicely to remove any dust and oils from the surface. Certainly want to pay close attention to the edges there that will be attached to the plate. So we're going to use some Fix-All adhesive for a permanent hold. And we're going to alternate this on these little sections of the candle holder so that my glue does not overlap. Then I'm going to take my Gorilla Glue and my little glue gun here, add that on there on the places where there wasn't any of the other glue. I'm going to center it by eye as closely as I can. I stood up to kind of look down over the top of it through the camera and then I'm just going to press it down for a moment and let it sit. I'm going to do the same thing for each one of these. I say Gorilla Glue glue sticks because they have a seem, in my opinion, to have a better hold. But you can use whatever you like. Any type of adhesive also that you like, you can use for your candlesticks. Some people have more luck with this and some people have more luck with non-silicone adhesives. Now these need to be set aside for a several hours, I'd say 24 hours to be on the safe side. We're going to take a variety of paints, Rust-Oleum and Krylon in copper, flat black, flat white, and in a, I believe I had a glossy white. I'm going to use this black furniture marker as well. So I used two coats of the flat paint on this one, and I'm going to decoupage that. That's so what we're going to do to the top of this one. So I found some, this was in a little paper pad, decorative paper pad. I found a circle that fits good enough for the top of the candle riser that I'm just going to use this as a guide to give me the right type of a, the right size circle to put on the top. So as I'm cutting my paper, I am pretty much holding my scissors straight and turning my paper when I cut. I have always done it this way. I don't know that I have ever shown it in my videos, but it was brought to my attention that I do it this way. When I watched the Crafting Cousins and they gave some tips on their tip videos, and one of them was to turn the paper instead of the scissors. It's easy to do. So it fits nicely down in there. I'm going to take a nice soft brush I don't want to mess up my paint finish and I'm going to use some Mod Podge, matte Mod Podge. I'm going to put it down here and brush all over the top surface and into the edges where my paper is going to go so that it will stick down. I'm going to put this on, gently pat it down and then once it is completely dry, I'm just going to set it aside once it's completely dry you can go back over with Mod Podge to seal it in and be sure you get around any of the edges pretty nicely with that um, brush. Make sure that everything is sealed so that nothing will pucker or wrinkle on you. It is raised on the outside, a little slump down in the middle, so just focus your the rubbing on the outside there. Okay, so the next one I spray painted with black and I put the copper on just the top tray part. You can see when I turned it upside to do upside down to do my extra look, um, bleh, bleh, coat of paint. I uh, it wasn't quite dry enough. It was dry to touch, but it didn't dry long enough. So it had some little chips in the paint. 
I'm using this furniture marker that I showed you before to go around the top of this and just cover any of that up. And I like it better this way too. If you see me raising up my hand awkwardly, it was to keep my wrist off of the wet paint. So that's why I was lifting up like that. I'm just going around the edges here to make sure that it blends into the black paint that was already on the surface. So there we go for that. And the technique I'm going to use on this is just going to be a distressing. And I'm going to do it with um, some copper paint. I'm going to start off with the darker because I thought it was a better match. This little brush. I'm going to start off by putting the dark paint in there. And then it looks like it's too dark. So I'm going to mix just a little bit more of a lighter color into it. I'm going to mix that well. And then remove most of the paint from the brush on that little tray that I'm using and then just on a scrap of paper. Then I'm going to go around with this brush and hit all of the raised areas with it. This is dry brushing because essentially there's not much paint left on that brush. And so on this is distressed. The desired look I want is that it's an old, old piece of tarnished copper. Maybe that has been painted and it is chipped away or been rubbed away. And of course, I realize that copper tarnish is a greenish color, but you know, you get what I was going for with this, right? So you can see the little streaks on there can see on the raised areas how it just picks up that paint it catches that paint we're not going to do this all the way around on the edges under there and on that top ridge also ideally not dropping your brush I just went around where it was close to the flat surface too on the top you can add more if you'd like or you can do less whatever looks good to you and I'm going to take that brush add a little more brush it off just a little bit and then I'm going to go back over here on this edge where I use the furniture paint Okay, so now the third one, I use the black paint, two layers of it all over it. Let it thoroughly dry. And then I'm going to take my white chalk paint and apply two coats of that, letting it dry very well in between. Just slapping it on there, kind of messy. And we're going to do a wet distressing on this third one. Now with this one, you want to be sure that you get underneath the riser, also underneath that top plate, so that it's all covered up and you won't be able to see it when this project is done. Okay, going to close off my can there. And then you can see here that I'm taking a damp piece of a sock. You can use any rag or a baby wipe that you would like and I'm just kind of wiping. Now you don't want to scrape too hard or you'll go all the way through the black and onto the glass. So just be sure that you you watch what you're doing. You do it with a little bit of force but carefully watching because all you want to see is the black. You do not want to see through to the glass. And this will give it the distressed look that we want. Gonna go over the ridges just where you would get natural wear. Just going back underneath this plate. Um, I had myself doing this from the beginning and the footage is not there. I don't know what happened. I cannot find it. So I'm trying to make it up by um, doing a little extra. This is a little more distressing than I probably would have put on here, but I needed to show you how to do it. Now keep rotating your cloth because that chalk paint really sticks in there and then you it kind of will smear, but it won't go through. So just keep sure, make sure that you rotate it. Here are our three together. And 
and now I'll show you what they all look like staged. So here's the black and copper and you can see better now in the lights how the copper just shines through with that black. It's, it turns out to be more of like a bronze, like a brush, brushed bronze color. Um, it's really beautiful. I, I can't wait to use this in the fall. I think it's going to look great with all the the fall colors, the rich colors. You can see all the little brush strokes, little distress areas on here. And this is how it looks without. Now you could always put an extra coat of copper if you would like, if it bothers you that you can see the shadow there underneath it. But I didn't feel like it was necessary, so I left it like that. And here's the second one. And this is with this extra coat of Mod Podge on top to keep it safe. It's nice and sealed. I think this would look great as Chevy Chic or French Farmhouse. And then here is the last one that is wet distressed. It looks like a classic farmhouse to me. What do you think? And which one of these do you like the best? Don't be intimidated by trying these different techniques. This is the first time I've ever wet distressed anything. And I'm pleased with it. I'm glad the way it turned out. And it's just paint. You could always repaint it if you don't like the way that it looks. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Yeah, and be sure to comment below which one of these is your favorite. Which one do you like the best and would fit into your home the best? Are you going to try any of these? Thanks so much for stopping by. I'll see you again soon. Bye.